In this video I will be explaining the basics of Menim. Throughout this video I will be using the Menim side view which helps you to see what you actually creating in this uh, code. So you can download it using the Visual Studio Codes ext extensions panel by typing Menim and you can download it by clicking this part. So let's start with how we can create our scene. So first thing we need to do is importing Menim to Python. After that we generally use these two uh, line of code as default. Here we define the name of our scene and define the type of our scene. You can change the first part according to your preference and the second part is to define your scene as 2D or 3D. So I defined my scene's name as my scene. After that I wrote this line of code as default to construct my scene. So after we constructed our scene, we move on to creating our objects. So first object that I have created is just a circle. If you want to make these objects appear in our scene, we need to create them using some animations. So what this code does is it creates a circle, it puts uh, the circle inside the scene and waits for 2 seconds. When I run Menim side view and hit enter, it just starts to uh, rendering the scene and once it renders the scene, it will show in a little window in the right side. So this is our scene, it creates the circle and just waits for 2 seconds. So when I press Ctrl S, it just renders the scene and puts it into this window. So now you can see that it, when I set the opacity to 1, it just fills the circle with the same color. So now I have uncommented all the parts and re-rendered the scene. If we read the code, we can see that it will first create the circle, the, our, our red circle, and put it into the scene with an animation. It will wait for 5 seconds and then set its fill to blue and stroke to yellow. After that it will change its stroke width to 25 and then scale it to 9 which will make it much more larger. And the runtime means that it will play this animation in 5 seconds. And after that it will play a fade out animation to make the circle disappear. What I want to add here is that these two lines just creates our object and the other parts just place the animations on screen. So if we do not use the self.play create function, it doesn't put the object that we have created onto the screen. The play function means that it will play an animation to put our circle into the scene and to create is the name of that animation. For example, I could have use write animation instead of create animation. So now I pressed Ctrl S to re-render the scene and you can see how it turns out on this part. As you can see now it draws the surrounding part of the circle first and then creates the fill effect. It is a small difference but it is a good example to explain how these animations work. For example if we didn't want to play any animations while putting our objects into the scene we can delete them and write add instead of play. If I again press Ctrl S and re-render the scene you can see that it will just put the object into the scene without any animations. As you can see, the circle have appeared on the screen just when the video has started. So now let's look at our second example file. So in this file I have defined a circle again and shifted it to 2 units right on the screen. And after that I have set the opacity, to the fill opacity to 0.25 and created a dot. So I wanted this dot to be inside and at the dead center of the circle. 
So I get the center of the circle using this function. And after that I shifted our dot to the center of the circle using this command. So let's start the rendering process again and see how it will turn out. So we see that what it does is creating a circle, then creating a dot inside that circle at the center of the circle, then it shifts the circle two units up and two units right. It as this circle and the dot are independent from each other, the dot doesn't move as the circle changes its position on the screen. So now let's look at how we can um, make them move together and let's assume that we want to put the dots always in the center of the circle. So to do that we can move on to our third example and the only thing I have changed is the using this always red row function. So let's start the rendering process one more time and let's see how it will turn out. As you can see the circle is drawn and the dot is also placed at the dead center of the circle but as we use the always red row function the dot always follows the center of the circle. So until now we have learned how we can move our objects on screen but we haven't learned that how this unit system works. To show that I have created a number plane and added coordinates to that. The add coordinates number just depicts that it will put the numbers on the plane. If we re-render the scene, you can see that we have a number plane and we have coordinates 1, 2, 3 and so on and so forth. The add coordinates function adds these numbers to the number plane using the LaTeX. As you can see the previous example is also moves just like in this example. So Minim uses this number plane to make objects move and decides the units according to this number plane. But it doesn't mean that if we move the number plane to another place, the Minim doesn't really care about the new number plane we have created. So let's see this on our new example. For our fifth example, we can see that I have manipulated our plane and changed its X range and Y range. It goes from minus 2 to 12 with a displacement of 1. Also I have changed the Y range which is goes from minus 1 to 7. Again with displacements of 1. For the rest of the code I haven't changed anything so the circle and the dot moves exactly like the previous example. So we can say that the circle and the dot moves independent of the number plane. So what if we want to move the dot and the circle to a coordinate on the number plane. For example, if you want to move it to x equals to 2 and y equals to 2 on this number plane, how we could do that? So in our sixth example, we can see that clearly. So in our sixth example, we will learn how we can move this circle and the dot to a certain po point on this um, number plane. To do that, we will use the C2P function which is the short version of coordinate point and we use this function according to this notation. In this case it will shift our circle to the point of 2.2 .2 in our specified plane. So let's render this scene and see how it will turn out. As you can see it creates our circle in the middle of the scene and moves it to the specified coordinates on our number plane. For our final example, I wanted to put all the things together. Now, as you can see, the first part is totally same with the previous example, but then I grouped our plane and dot and played a fade out animation on my group, which means that our plane and dot will disappear at the same time. After that, I have created a triangle, shifted it to our specified position, which is x equals to 9 and y equals to 2, set its color to yellow and set the opposite to 0.5. We doesn't see these things happen on the screen, 
because we did all of these things before we put our triangle on our screen. After that I have played the transformation effect which transforms our circle into triangle and after that I have rotated our triangle which is now our circle. Finally I have fade out all the objects in screen. So last thing I want to show is how you can export this scene at the highest quality. What Menem does is just rendering these videos in a low quality to show you faster. But if you want to use these videos in a project, you will need to export them in full resolution. So what you need to do is just typing Menem and uh, your file name. It's uh, 07.py in my case and if you use the p-flag it will render it in 1080p and 60hz per second. If you hit enter it will just automatically render it shows the final result on your screen. As you can see our video is rendered in full resolution now. So this is the end of the video and thank you so much for watching.